We're building the easiest French drain that a DIYer can do. It's three inch pipe, so it's a shallow dig, but it's gonna be following the same principles of what our four inch French drain systems are, where we use two pipes at the bottom of the trench. We're gonna have a perforated pipe that's gonna to go to a solid pipe as our discharge pipe. And then we're gonna run the solid pipe to a pop-up emitter. This would be the easiest DIY French drain a homeowner could install. We have a lot of water that comes right down into this swaled area in high concentration. And this is really hard to mow. It sits really saturated. We don't need to get carried away and dig any more than what's necessary. We're gonna put in a three inch French drain system. All right, so the men are gonna put in one of our French drain kits. This is a three inch French drain system. You get 25 feet in each box. We ship two boxes. We end up with 50 feet of three inch perforated pipe. This is virgin material. This is not made out of recycled material. That's why it's white. So this is the products the guys are gonna use along with 25 feet of our four ounce non-woven geotextile filter fabric that has been double punched. So when you dig your trench out, when you're using three inch perforated pipe, nowhere in this 25 feet of French drain are we deeper than 12 inches. Now, if you did a four inch pipe, you're gonna be at 14 to 18 inches through this 25 feet of French drain. It's a lot more digging. You're gonna be hauling in more stone and there's gonna be a lot of clay to haul out. We actually kept the dirt that we dug out of this 25 foot trench just to show you what it looks like. We have a pile right there. That's 25 feet of dirt from a French drain. You're digging shallower. You're not digging as deep. When you put in a four inch pipe, you end up needing to go so much deeper that you're removing so much dirt and you're adding so much stone. In many cases, it's not necessary. We're the first to bring a virgin three inch pipe to market. This perforated pipe is DIY friendly. It's super easy to use. What the men did is they put a little bit of sand on the bottom of this clay trench. I know you can't really probably see it in the video, but there's probably only a quarter inch of sand. That's it, just a light sand. We refer to this as the soil filter zone. This is fantastic. The water's gonna run through the four ounce non-woven geotextile fabric much quicker this way. The men are also going to do this on the back end. When we close this drain up, we'll put sand on the top. All right, so our kit includes a four ounce non-woven filter fabric. This is a non-woven geotextile filter fabric that has been punched twice to up its flow rate. So make sure when you lay your fabric, you don't want to have wrinkles in it. This fabric, it has a lot of needle holes in it. That's to up its flow rate. If it's all bunched together and it has fabric that's actually overlapping fabric, what happens is you can't possibly line up those needle punches, you lose your flow rate. So the men are doing a really good job of pulling the fabric tight, removing all the wrinkles. This is a beautiful installation. We're gonna run two perforated pipes in this French drain. They're gonna be three inch. That's why this is a shallow, easy dig. We're then gonna connect them to a solid pipe as a discharge pipe. We're gonna take that solid pipe to a pop-up emitter. If you do three things when building a French drain, you're guaranteed to have a French drain that lasts forever. If you put in two pipes in the bottom of your trench, you hold yourself to a tolerance of a wider trench. Wider trench, more tubing, more stone, you're not gonna clog, it's not gonna fill up with sediment. If you use a non-woven geotextile filter fabric that's double punched, you won't have to worry about the sediment washing into the stone and plugging and clogging your French drain. Also, when you dig out all the clay, you wanna make sure you haul it away. Don't put any of it back in. I see guys all the time, they'll trench a line and they'll put one pipe in. They won't use any fabric, they'll put a little stone in and then they'll push that same dirt back on top of it. Well, no wonder they only last two years. If you build them like this, they're gonna last forever. The men are connecting a solid discharge line to the perforated pipe. The discharge line is so important. Don't quit when you get done with your French drain and run out of steam when it comes time to discharging the line. We're gonna go over all the things that you need to know about putting in a really good discharge line 
And this is the first one. Make, make sure you have a really good connection to your French drain when you go to your solid discharge line. Always connect the pipe on the outside, not the inside. An internal coupler is an obstruction inside the pipe. If there is any sediment that's flowing through the French drain system, you don't want it to build up and clog the pipe because you use an internal coupler. Use an external coupler. Connect the pipes from the outside. There's no obstruction inside the tubing. Now, Kale's using a really good plumbing tape. This is key, this is important. If you want to ensure a really good connection to that solid pipe, you want to use a good plumbing tape. Now, the coupler's going to work, and the coupler's going to work well, but this is just a little added insurance. If you have some movement, if the ground moves, if you had some settling, you don't want it to pull the coupler and end up having your solid pipe pulled away from your perforated pipe. This way, you ensure your discharge line the connection is sound. When you discharge your French drain, you have to discharge it at a point where it drops off. We have our lines dropped much lower than our French drain. We're on a ditch bank. You can see cameras don't really show angle very well, but we're on a pretty steep embankment. We never put the pop-up side by side unless we have to. It's kind of nice when you can stagger them you know, just for erosion issues. So we have one up there on a three inch solid pipe. Then the other discharge was brought down a little further. This is textbook. The guys did a really nice job. We went ahead and we used our HDP pop-ups. We have a riser, a couple of risers. This is a beautiful job. The guys did a really nice job. By using a pop-up, you don't have to worry about muskrats getting in there because that's a big problem on a ditch embankment. You end up with a lot of, small animals and rodents, they'll make a home up inside your French drain discharge line. They'll bring a bunch of material up there to make for bedding, a nest. Next thing you know, when you need that thing to work, you end up with a clog. So if you put a pop-up on the end of your French drain, you don't have to worry about that. Now right here, the men created like a pocket. They did a beautiful job. I love what they did. They went ahead and they used external couplers to go from perforated pipe to solid pipe. Then they taped it, and then they created this, this nice pocket. What you do is you cut a small hole with a box knife, a razor. Then you push the pipe in. You push it in and you stretch out the fabric. People always say, how do you seal this so dirt doesn't get in? Well, the guys cut such a small hole and then they forced the pipe through. And it's like a gasket. It's like a seal around it. They did a beautiful job. This is a really nice job by two of our very best. The men are using really small stone. For a DIY project, this is the easiest to shovel and rake. It goes in really nice. It goes around the pipe, it fills the trench, it levels out almost instantly. Now, if you use really big rock because you want to air prune the tree roots, if you have an air pruning situation on hand, I'm going to tell you to go to the four inch pipe. Plain and simple. You need a much bigger trench for that because you're gonna use really big rock and you're gonna use a larger diameter pipe. You wanna create a bigger void for air. This French drain is a great yard drain if you don't have a bunch of trees and shrubs growing right up on top of it. You wanna make sure you fully encapsulate your French drain system. That way you won't end up with dirt migrating through your drainage stone, clogging your drainage stone, then you're unable to get that water, that surface water you're trying to capture down into your French drain pipe. Now the guys are working really hard to not end up with a heavy overlap. If you end up with a heavy overlap, the problems you run into, the double punch fabric that has all these needle holes in it, when you overlap it, you're not gonna get those holes to line up. So now the non-woven geotextile filter fabric is gonna work like a non-woven geotextile fabric that has not been punched. When you're done with the non-woven geotextile filter fabric, when you're done encapsulating the entire French drain, that means all the stone and pipe as one is encapsulated, you're going to want to take some of that small stone and just tuck it in between the fabric and the wall of your trench. Fill in any voids that you see. Anywhere you can get stone to drop in, you want to do this. That way, when you're done with your French drain, you won't end up with any sinkholes. What you want to do now to increase your infiltration rate is you just want to put a quarter inch of sand on the fabric. You'll need about two and a half bags 
for every 25 feet of French drain. What the guys will then do is they'll just level this out over top of the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. We're then going to lay the clay backed sod that we cut off right over top of this. We're not even going to worry about the fact that we have a clay backed turf grass going over this French drain. With sand or without sand, once the turf grass roots into the French drain system, all the water is going to follow the root into the French drain system. Gravity, capillary action, the law of physics. Now, while we're waiting for this grass to root into this non-woven geotextile filter fabric, we have this little bit of sand on top now. If you're trying to get a lot of surface water with a French drain, this is the number one thing that you can do to increase its infiltration rate. So just remember all the steps. You want to pull the fabric tight. You want to trim it so you don't have a heavy overlap. You want to take some of that small stone and you want to tuck it in any areas that you see that there's a gap between the fabric and your trench. Now you just go over top of it with sand, just like a quarter inch of sand. This is going to increase the infiltration rate of your French drain. It's going to make your French drain take in surface water. Now you can see Juan's putting the sod back over top of the sand and the uh, non-woven geotextile filter fabric. So this is how easy this is. You do your fully encapsulated French drain, just how the men demonstrated. Again, you guys have the great privilege of seeing two of French drain man's best right here, putting in this kit. They're doing a great job. So you take your sod, I recommend that you always cut it off with a sod cutter. Then you cut it in manageable pieces so that it's easier to work with. Instead of trying to use a whole sod roll, you just have these 18 inch pieces. So the men cut this with a sod cutter. Then they went ahead and took a shovel and they cut them in manageable pieces when they removed them before doing the excavation. Then everything's in reverse. It goes together super easy. Now this is winter here in Michigan. So this sod is lying dormant. That's why it's not green, it's not dead. And it's not the drought season, we're not to that yet. It's just still winter here. So we're getting this in during a thaw. So we have some stone and some sand on top of the fabric. We've got a good soil filter zone. We're gonna be able to take in a lot of surface water now. We just really picked up the infiltration rate on this French drain. In a couple of years, the sod will root through the non-woven geotextile filter fabric down into the French drain. It's gonna work fantastic. Now, one thing that I would like to caution all the homeowners and DIYers about, when you have small stone like this, you want to take whatever got spilled in the lawn, just pick up the sod and just do this with it because I'm here to tell you, when a lawnmower breaks your car window with one of these small stones, because that's what's going to happen, that's what that looks like. So this is what we do on all our jobs. This is going to help that soil filter zone on top of the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. It's not going to hurt it. Remember, you don't want to haul the dirt away that's going on your discharge line. Make sure to take the big chunks of clay, chop them up with your shovel, step on them with the heel of your boot. This is where you're going to have settling. You got a lot of air pockets, and over time you're going to have a lot of settling. If you spend a little extra time when you're doing this, you're going to be thanking yourself in the long run because you're not going to have any settling. You're not going to be going back adding some dirt where you had a sinkhole. Just chop away at those big clumps with your shovel. Just work them in. Work them around your pop-up emitter. Always use a pop-up emitter with a turf restrictor plate in a case like this. Otherwise, all the grass and weeds on the ditch bank, they're gonna grow right over top of this. Your pop-up's not gonna work. I would every six months, if you're in a tropical region, a sunbelt region, Every six months, I'd cut the grass out around this. In the north, we do find just cutting the grass out around these turf restrictor plates once a year. You can't crack the HDPE riser. It's the strongest riser on the market. It's indestructible, it's pliable. The pop-up is also made out of HDPE. We've driven it over with tractors, trucks. I did a video where I show a Duramax 
Chevy diesel, one ton, the front axle, where the engine is, where all the weight is. We couldn't break the pop-up. I could leave that video in a link. HDPE has a memory. Even if you drive over it with something that weighs so much that it causes a little deflection, it'll literally come right back to its original shape. It's a remarkable material. We absolutely love the HDPE. We don't have to use any bad solvents or any bad chemicals. We don't have to use any, you know, everybody knows how bad the PVC cement is. Now DIYers and contractors, a four inch pipe displaces 56% more area. Keep that in mind because when you're excavating your French drain system, you're gonna have 56% more area, more dig, more dirt to dispose of. This was two corrugated pipes that were perforated, side by side, low profile, and that's all the dirt that was left over. 25 feet of French drain, a twin pipe, three inch system. This is the easiest DIY French drain. We sell this in a kit, two 25 foot pipes, that are perforated with 25 feet of four ounce non-woven geotextile filter fabric that has been double punched. Ours is double punched because we want to up the flow rate. If you install it the way we just showed, you're gonna have success you can't miss. It's a French drain that will last forever. If you found any of this information helpful, give us a thumbs up, it supports the channel. If you have any questions about this installation, leave them in the comment section. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until that next video,